Hi everyone, God bless you. This is the day before Father's Day and I thought I would say a word related to fathers and the expression fathers and Jesus says something very stark about the use of that term in the spiritual context in Matthew 23 in particular in verse 9 if you have a Bible and you want to look there. In this chapter Jesus is reprimanding the scribes and the Pharisees. It says in 23.1, Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat, so practice and observe whatever they tell you, but do not what they do. He is saying that there were these religious elites who were known as the Sadducees and the Pharisees, different sects of the religious hierarchy at the time, the Jewish hierarchy, and they were practicing differently than what they were preaching and telling everyone else to do. And in that chapter, it's a series of woes, W-O-E, against these people and how we are not to be like them. They're like hypocrites, which are play actors. And Jesus tells his followers not to be like them. Don't listen to them. Don't take them seriously. Certainly don't do what they do because they'll lead you astray every time. And he covers various areas here, but the section I want to concentrate on has to do with titles. Let me back up a little bit and describe them a little further here, though. In verse 5 it says, they do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. These, these were these little religious ornamentations that they liked showing off portions of scripture they would put on their forehead and on their arms so that people could see them and consider them to be very scriptural and spiritual. And their fringes on their long robes were very ostentatious. And they love the place of honor at feasts and the best seats in the synagogues, you know. Put me right up front there in the front pew so I can be seen by everybody in the church with my whole ornate outfit on. That was their, their thought. They like the best seats and greetings in the marketplace and being called rabbi by others, you know. <coughs> Reverend so-and-so. The right reverend so-and-so, bishop so-and-so, archbishop so-and-so, pastor this, senior pastor that, lead pastor that. I think you get the idea where I'm going with this. They like to be called rabbi, which means teacher, by the way. But Jesus says in... Matthew 23, 8, but you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. And who, of course, is the supreme rabbi, the supreme teacher? Jesus himself. And call no man, and here we go, father on earth, for you have one father who is in heaven. Neither be called instructors, for you have in one, one instructor, the Christ. The greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. And there's the drift of it all. Do not exalt yourselves and be caught up in this self-exaltation, this religious pomp and circumstance. Because you're to be servants, says Jesus to his followers. It's not about you making the big show in front of men. It's about you being the servant, Jesus would say, as I am the servant to all. Jesus said, I didn't come to be served, but to serve. And these Religious clerics, again, were hung up on many things, but in particular, as I'm focusing on today, titles, religious titles, formal, 
ceremonial elevated religious titles. It's amazing when you listen to some videos and responses and comments about this online, how so many miss the point, and I don't want to designate any religious group, any Christian grouping. But what are we to make of this specifically verse 9 and Jesus talking about not calling any man father? What are we to make of that? Are we literally not to be calling anyone father as a title? As a title. Well, interestingly, so many will jump on this and say, well, obviously he can't mean that literally because we all have earthly fathers and then there were the church fathers and when we look over church history we see that the reformation, reformation the leaders are the ones that had the problem with this but up until their, this point the 16th century there was no problem and so on and so forth so we can't be taking this literally and so it's perfectly fine to call your priest father is it? Clearly Jesus is saying no. Well, you can't take this literally. Yes, we can take this literally in the sense of using Father as an elevated religious title, insisting upon that sort of thing. We say, well, Catholics do this all the time. They call their priest Father. Well, that brings in the whole matter of the priesthood in Catholicism and Greek Orthodox and elsewhere. But setting that whole matter aside, again, it's perfectly acceptable in many denominations to call the priest, to call the cleric, Father. Jesus says, do not do that. You mean you understand that to be literal, literally, do not call any man Father? Yes, I will not call, for example, a man with a priestly collar on, as I encounter him, Father. I will show him deference and respect, but I will not literally use the term Father. Jesus is warning us, again, about being caught up into this mindset. And it is a mindset. It is an insistence. It is a tradition that leads to... Pride, says Jesus. Again, he's denouncing Phariseeism. You read through the whole chapter, the whole series of, again, condemnations. And Jesus warns us very clearly here not to use these titles as, a, as being showing unusual deference to these people. These are men. These are to be servants. These are not kings. These are not potentates. These are spiritual leaders. You know, pastors, whatever you want to call them, bishops, elders, are spiritual leaders. They are leaders. And yes, the Bible uses these various terms. But we, are again, are not to be insistent upon calling people by these elevated terms. The problem is always pride, vainglory, and self-elevation. Again, it's about making an impression upon other people as to how spiritual we are. There's nothing wrong with carrying oneself around with dignity and respect, and I have great respect for pastors. And I am uh, mindful of their office and their calling, but at the same time, I also hold them to um, a position of respect and expect great things from them. I've been a pastor for many years, but I should never insist upon calling, being called by a certain title. Paul said, I became 
as a father to you through the gospel. And so people say that that's in 1 Corinthians 4, 15. And so some say, we see Paul himself even refer to himself uh, as a father. Yes, as a spiritual father, but not in, a, in the form of bearing some kind of title. And this is where so many trip up and trying to understand and teach this passage. They say, we'll see, the word father is used throughout the scriptures. Uh, Paul himself refers to a, refers to himself as a father uh, and elsewhere in the scriptures but that is being expressed relationally not officially and there is the rub right there Jesus is addressing the official titles and the insistence upon again this kind of uh, positional respect Jesus says, no, this is unacceptable. Throw away the titles. Remember there's only one rabbi. Remember there's only one instructor. Remember there's only one father. And don't we pray that in what we call the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven. Certainly, relationally speaking, there are fathers. And I think of John and he refers to those who were reading his letters as his children. He was their spiritual father, relationally. But would John insist upon being called father? I think not. So you take this literally, you take this actually. Yes, I think we are to take this literally. And I know many would disagree with that, but that's the case. Anyway, now my dog's starting up here. God bless you today. I hope there were some thoughts there for you. I welcome your comments. Peace to you.